Well, apparently this length of cable that is being taken up by my by my width right here is enough to make it so that the cable ends up being too short. So I need to try and get the fasten much closer to the edge here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in there so that that little metal thing on the end of the cable can actually live right in this end area. So there it is modified again. So that hole is where that little metal thing on the end of the cable is going to live. Not going to be as strong, but it should be strong enough. And this I drilled out. We're going to put a shorter one of these in there. So hopefully that'll solve the problem. Here, come here. I'll show you what I did. See this big hole? Yeah. I see. I see. You, put, you put the cable in there. And then the, so that that little metal thing yeah. sits in that hole. I see how you did it. And that'll... That gains some, and then I drilled this out. Make sure the cable will go through this one. This is a shorter one. Yeah. So replace that sh long one with the short one. Make sure the cable goes through first, though. I'm sure I grab the right size drill bit off the bench. It goes through. All right. You know what? Yeah. Okay. So we just hooked up the cable to the carburetor and. It's just like, just perfect. I can tell by that noise that it's actually hitting the, uh, the stop screw for the idle. So that's it right there. So now you're gonna wanna tighten these screws up cause you didn't tighten them up yeah. all the way just to make sure they don't loosen up. Yeah. And then, uh, well, why don't you go ahead and do that and then we'll put the spring on. How, how tight do you want these? Well, tight, because if they vibrate and fall out, then the throttle will stop working. It'd be easier to do it together. I tighten the top while you hold the nut. No, 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 no. It's easier like this. All right. What'd you do with the nut for this one? I put it on it. It, it gave me a whole bunch more. If I didn't have that nut on there, it wouldn't do it. And I tightened it really a lot. I can just do this one a little bit more. Is that your phone or my phone? I don't know. Is it tightened? Yeah. Oh. Alright. So, so now, all we have to do is take this spring. Want to do it? Oh, I got it. Take this spring, stick it on here like this. Stick it on there. Pull it back. Well, we don't want it to be pulling the throttle, so hold on. No. Alright, go ahead. Step on the throttle. You can push it. Whatever. Press on the accelerator. That isn't working, is it? Nope. What it's doing is, it, it can't, the spring is giving up before it puts tension on. That's actually a very strong spring on that. The return spring on the carburetor, that torsion spring is too strong. This spring can't overcome that. So we're gonna have to, mm. well, we're gonna have to omit the spring altogether which means this sleeve needs to live way back here. What sleeve? This one. Okay. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to take the spring out. Or can we... We're going to move the sleeve back here. See that hole where yeah. I put the spring in? I'm going to make that hole large enough so that it can, can go right over this bolt. Again? Well, I got... Or we can just put like a wire and wrap it there and wrap it there. Oh yeah, you know what? Why don't we just do a real hack job that'll fall apart? You take that off so I can drill a hole in it. We take the spring out altogether. It's interesting to me. That almost looks like that. that's where that was. No, it was right here. It was right here before. Yeah, but see right here? See that discoloration right there? That banded discoloration? I was wondering if it was there at some point. I might be able to drill that right in there. If you disconnect it from the carburetor end, I might be able to pull it out far enough to get the drill bit right in there. Yeah, you can get it through there. Yep. I'll stick my little vise right in here and... All right. I'm going to take this to get the size of the drill bit we need to... for that. Tilt it up. Tilt it up, what do you mean? The limit device right there. Right there. There, hold it right there. Put 
golden. Because yeah, that actually worked pretty good there. All right. What's full throttle? I think that is full throttle right there. Yeah. Don't hold it. When I take my foot off, it'll make the cable pop off. See how if I push on it too hard, it actually it's like almost bending that bracket. No, not really. Not too bad. So we don't need that extra. I think it's going to work. But you know what the problem is right there? What? Look at that cable. It's rubbing the tire. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to come up with some. We'll have to wire tie this, plastic tie it. Does it work okay in this position? Seems to, huh? Alright, I don't know. I think that's gonna be I think that's gonna be alright. Now what else would it do? How about the chain? Is the chain good in the parts cleaner? I'll have to pull it out and see. Last time I looked it didn't look so great. We can still use it. You really wanna use it? doesn't mean we can. Why couldn't, why couldn't we? Because just because you wished you're wishing very badly doesn't mean I just told you it didn't look like it was very good. So if it's all seized up you can't use it. Can we unseize it? That's what putting it in the parts cleaner and soaking it all this time was supposed to have done. So far it hasn't worked. All right another job well done. So we're gonna put in the final dry gear oil. So on the, uh, there's a label on the side, on this back side over here that used to say what kind of oil to put in here. But it's really hard to read, it's pretty rough shape. But I looked in the uh, spider box manual and it actually says to use 80 weight gear oil. So over the years, whenever I go to flea markets, yard sales, that kind of thing, estate sales, I pick up clean oil and stuff like that that people leave in the garage because you can usually get it for like next to nothing this one's almost empty I've used most of it but so this one so this is uh, premium performance Napa gear oil 80 weight this would be fine this is high point C gear oil uh, also 80 weight Salsa should be fine this thing's not a high performance application or anything like that so and this one is fancy this is DuraBlend synthetic 80 weight so this is the probably the best quality oil of these three but there's not much left in here but between the three of them we should have enough mix them all up in one yes nice cocktail so anyways uh, the gear case as we know because we had it all apart and put all new seals and gears in it and everything right is this just in this little back section so there's not a lot of uh, volume in there not only that but you don't fill the thing completely with oil because as it heats up it's got to have a place for that oil to expand into and that's what this hole on the top here that had the hose in it that's a breather so that as the oil heats up and expands and it increases in volume it'll displace the air the air has some place to go out if the air didn't have a way to ex escape, what could happen is the pressure could build up inside the case and it could actually force the oil out past the seals and you'd end up with a leak. When you stop running the engine and, and it cools off or and, you know weather conditions change, as it cools, what can happen is if you don't have a way for air to go back in through the vent, if there was no vent, air wouldn't be able to go back in and as it cooled, it could actually create a vacuum and that would be bad too. So, this basically is just here to keep the pressure equalized inside the case as the oil expands and contracts. So you actually only fill the oil up to where this bolt is. So there's no dipstick or anything like on an, like on an engine for the engine oil. All you do is you take this bolt out and you put oil in through here until oil starts to run back out this hole. And then you know that you're at the proper level. Of course you've got to have the vehicle on level ground which we do everything else level you wouldn't want this like jacked up in the back or something because then it would be you wouldn't get a correct reading 
So it's pretty straightforward. So let's guess if this is a 10 millimeter. It's not, okay. Yeah, it looks like it's a 12. Yeah. We know I didn't put anything in here, or we didn't put anything in here, so there shouldn't be, shouldn't be anything to come out. I don't mind that they do it this way because it's not it's not uncommon but what's kind of a pain is the fact that it's underneath this case the way it is so it's kind of hard to get at without spilling it all over the place put a hose in there yeah that's what i'm wondering whether or not i've got a little hunk of hose over here this is an empty pump oil can this will fit in there just fine it squirts oil in there so we just put the oil in here Squirt it into the, uh, squirt it in there and keep squirting it in until it comes back out the hole and we'll know we're done. <laughs> Crow, sounds like a monkey. back out. That's it? That's all it needs? Yeah. Well, look at it. It's the bottom of the screw would be like, like the level that's in, you know, needs to be in the case, right? Look how far down that is in the case. There's only this much case there. What the heck was that? I don't know. I think that's all the oil that's in there. Yeah. All right, just to be on the safe side, we'll put a little more in. Put the good stuff in. It's all good stuff. You know the name, the good name brand stuff. I think what I'm, what I'm trying to let you know is it's all good enough for this thing. <laughs> if you want to put some high performance gear oil in here, you know, like they get this stuff called like Purple Power or something like that. It's special synthetic gear oil it's colored purple and it's extra expensive for like high performance applications you, you're more than welcome to spend your money on that but the oil I'm giving you for free here yeah I think this is good enough what do you use this stuff on tractor the uh, rear gear case in the Oliver. Um, one of these I, I got for the um, the Dodge Ram probably, or the rear differential in cars uses this kind of gear oil. Depends on the car, like not the one, like the Honda? No, the Honda uses special gear oil and if you put the wrong kind in it causes problems. That's because it's all-wheel drive, and it's got all these clutch packs and stuff in the rear, and it's, it's a whole thing. Nope. No, now it's got enough in there. Definitely. Screws right there. Yep. You need to put the crush washer on. Yeah, and we crush it, because we can buy a new one. Torque it. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Do a good job of clearing, oops, cleaning this off so that we'll know if it's leaking. There we go. What? Nothing. I said, there we go, it's tightened. Okay. Oh, that sounds beautiful. Is it hard to turn? No, it's about the same, I think. I don't think it's really any different. Don't forget, this is a reduction, a gear reduction. So when I turn this side, it's actually spinning a lot faster than how much I'm turning it here. So that's why it's a little bit harder to turn the sprocket. Whereas if this was open and we were turning this wheel in here, this would be a lot easier to turn. And that weird noise, that's actually the belt inside this CVT. All right, I think that's gonna be uh, good to go. Now we just gotta see if we can uh, 
re resurrect that chain yep. and fix the seat belt. I don't know if the brakes work or not, the but I guess you don't really, don't really need the, the brakes. brakes work. That's all right. I'm, they I'm, work. I'm not concerned. So this is the chain that was with the Yurf dog when we got it. And uh, it uh, was rusted solid pretty bad. And uh, as soon as we got it off the, uh, off the cart, I threw it in my parts washer and then just let it sink to the bottom of the parts washer and left it in there. And so it's been in there for weeks. And then I took it out um, a few days ago, and it still was pretty bad as far as seized up. So then I had an old gallon of uh, about half full of um, liquid wrench. I mean, the, the, the container looked... In fact, I guess like this, this, this looks like a really old container of liquid wrench. So... I like the plus these bonus benefits add to crankcase oil quiets noisy valve lifters and it removes power robbing deposits I don't think you want to do that these days liquid wrench in your crankcase okay so uh, don't put that in your infinity <laughs> anyways what I did was I, uh, I had a shallow pan and I uh, put the chain in there and I filled it with this liquid wrench and I just let this soak and it's been in there a few days so I took it out now and it's actually showing some signs of life but it's still there are still some links that just seem like they're completely seized so so for instance right there that actually moves pretty well but that one right in between the two doesn't want to move so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, take my vise here and just hold one link at a time and go through and see if I can't force it to move on every link which is uh, painstakingly annoying I guess I should start by removing this master link again. Oh, that master link's really seized in there. Turn it like this, that pin's not moving. Well, I got it started. It wasn't easy. I managed to grab go to grab the chain, totally forgetting about that I just heated it with the torch not that long ago. Like a dummy. Still hurts. Ah, finally. Now, what I started to say before was I've got to get this chain worked loose so that all of the links move. So easiest way for me to do that is to, is to put it in the vise and just do this until it works free. That is one. Now loosen, move, move it up a little bit, and repeat. Oh man, that one's really tight. Oh, 
Uh, try some penetrating oil, see what happens.